it's the new year happy new year to people i know it's belated but better late than never it's a new year i'm sure a new slate of shady films this is what hollywood is used to but i figure you know what Maybe there could be a couple good ones. Just like 2023, there were a couple good ones. Not a whole lot, but I did f figure out 10 of them. Now, there's a few honorable mentions I could put on here. Missing, the kind of sequel to Searching. Not nearly as good as Searching. Uh, the little girl, I think, did as best as she could, but she was not nearly as likable memorable as john cho in searching i thought the third act kind of got a bit muddled but i do like the concept the gimmick i should say it still was an intriguing mystery at least for two-thirds of it i did like the guy who i forget the character's name she would talk to on the phone and he's trying to help her out and he's in a different country and he's been hired but he's he was like my favorite character in the movie I remember him as the bad guy in Desperado. Was it Bucho in Desperado? I really liked him. Overall, I didn't mind the movie. Another honorable mention, Sick, came out. Some say 2022, but I think officially 2023. That's an honorable mention. Kevin Williamson, helped, uh, he wrote the film. And it's about a group of people that stay at this house. Is during the pandemic. So yeah, a little bit of that. And it's pretty much, they get attacked, and it becomes kind of a very lengthy foot chase. Like a good chunk of the film is one long foot chase, and it was actually well handled. John Hyams, apparently if you don't put him in the action genre, he's actually not that bad in terms of the direction of it. So sick, I didn't mind that one. Same with Super Mario Brothers. It didn't quite make the list, but I did not mind the Super Mario Brothers movie. I still prefer the 1993 film. I know it's not like the game, but I thought the film was more interesting. I thought the film was more creative in terms of just how weird it was. And I like the actors, Bob Hoskins especially. May you rest in peace. Maybe a bit of nostalgia because I did grow up with the film. But I did like the Mario Brothers animated film. I thought they really went a bit pushy with the Peach, I Woman Hear Me War. Not even War, but War. Like, whoa, whoa, she's a lady, she can do shit. Yeah, I know, I've seen that many times, including this film. Whoopty fucking do. Koopa with his love song. He wants to put his dick in. He wants to eat a peach for hours, to quote Caster Troy. But... Luigi had nothing to do but be a prisoner. But it was a decent film. It was nice looking, well animated. Got a lot of the references that people who follow the games would enjoy. It was entertaining enough. But number 10, I'm going to put Thanksgiving. Which Eli Roth... I liked his Death Wish film with Bruce Willis, and this one was a fun enough slasher movie. I still think the characters left a bit to be desired. I still think that the dialogue left a bit to be desired, but I thought the gore was entertaining. Uh, there was a decent amount of kills. Uh, the Black Friday opening was fairly memorable, and it was pretty decently directed. I still think the trailer was better. I think the trailer had a little bit more oomph in terms of lying the trailer. The girl's on the trampoline and she jumped and her ass landed on the knife. Here it's all well, her foot landed. Because I guess, hey, we don't want to offend people too much even though it's a slasher film. But... Uh, it, it was still a fun fast-paced flick. Like I said, I do wish the characters were better, because I can't say the characters were that... Like, the acting wasn't bad, but if you are to ask me who the characters were, I couldn't tell you. 
except maybe Patrick Dempsey. Number nine, I'm going to put Guy Ritchie's The Covenant. I thought Jay Gyllenhaal did a fairly stellar job acting-wise. He was a soldier in Afghanistan where him and his team get an interpreter, which is the last one dies, so they get a new interpreter. And the two of them kind of bond a little bit where the guy is good at his job. One day their team gets hit and it's pretty much the two of them trying to get back to base, running, gunning, hiding, stealth kills, until ultimately Jake Gyllenhaal gets hit, he gets heavily injured, the interpreter helps him, pulls him to safety miles and miles and miles, who knows how many miles, 20, 30, 100 miles. Then Jake Gyllenhaal, he realizes he's back at home, but that guy is still there on the run. And he's like, I owe him. I'm going to go rescue him. And it may not be the most original movie. But I thought it was a good looking film. That was uh, solidly acted. Has a couple of pretty decent action sequences. And did not seem like a Guy Ritchie movie. I kind of mean that in a good way. If you're a guy that has seen other Guy Ritchie films, you're like, ah, I don't know about this. It's actually not like his other movies, which I think is a plus because it shows that he did do different stuff. And like I said, I think Jay Jono did a good job. He has some nice action at the end. Nothing extravagant, but decent enough. And I know so many people prop up Sound of Freedom. I, I, I appreciate the intent of Sound of Freedom. I think this movie was a much better movie in terms of a person going back to a place to... There's certain similarities I saw in both movies. Maybe not in terms of the exact plot, but certain elements... I mentioned my review, review of Sound of Freedom, and that's not on the list. I don't hate a sound, The Sound of Freedom. I don't hate it, but this film I did prefer much more as a movie. So that's number nine. Uh, number eight, I will put... Actually, let me make sure. I should wait. Okay. 10 was. Yeah, 10 was Thanksgiving. Okay, just want to make sure. Sorry, it's that early in the morning. Boy. 10 Thanksgiving, 9 Guy Ritchie's The Covenant, 8 is the Dungeons and Dragons movie that came out, Honor Mon Thieves. I did not think I would like the film, because I don't know shit about Dungeons and Dragons. All I know about it is that awful movie with Marlon Wayans and Jeremy Irons. That's all I know about Dungeons and Dragons, and I know a lot of people have played the games, role playing, haven't played it, don't know shit about it. Never even seen the cartoons, played the games, nothing. Yes, this film is like Guardians of the Galaxy, but honestly, I like this a lot more than the actual Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is now on the list, because I think the first half of that movie sucked balls, and was boring as shit, with terrible humor, and music that just, now we're really just forcing whatever the fuck's left on the playlist, even if it doesn't fit, and... The stuff with the raccoon, there's some nice emotional moments, but you, it was also predictable. Here, I thought it was just more of a consistent tone. I thought the actors played off each other better compared to Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I thought the, the pacing was a bit faster. Um, I liked the bit where they got to keep raising the dead and they keep getting the wrong one. and I thought that was a fun sequence. I thought Chris Pine and Michelle Rodriguez actually were not bad in their roles. 
and I thought it was a entertaining popcorn movie. I did like that movie. So I mean, sadly it bombed, but I don't care. I had more fun with that movie than Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. So Dungeons Dungeons and Dragons Honor Mon Thieves, I find that number eight. Number seven, yes, Creed Three. I never thought I'd have a Creed film on this list, but I did. Because it's a standalone movie, you can watch it by itself. I'm actually glad Sylvester Stallone's not in it, because that way it just helps me separate it from the rest of the franchise. Michael B. Jordan's character didn't seem as prickly and doesn't seem as shitty as the first two. Like, the first one was trying to be, like, Rocky Balboa meets Rocky Five meets Rocky One. Tree Two was trying to suck the dick off Rocky Four. Here's Dolph again. Tree Three was his own thing. And it told a story that was more by itself, that wasn't just a ripoff of the other Rocky films. Where Creed had his friend, and there's this thing with the tops, and one got arrested and one didn't. And the guy comes back, and he wants a bit of personal vendetta. And I thought Jonathan Majors, despite his issues going on nowadays, I thought he played it low-key, but effective. I did Michael B. Jordan, I actually did not mind his character. Um, I think some of the music, especially during the train montage, I would have picked different music. Some of the music was fine. Some of it, I'm like, eh. But uh, the actual training did my... I would just end the fight scene. I, I liked the way he directed the fight at the end. It made it seem a bit different and a bit... Because there's a lot of ways you could do a boxing scene. But it's like, oh, wow. He decided to do his own and not just rip off Rocky 1 or rip off Rocky 2. It's like, win, lose, or draw, I'm going to do this boxing scene different compared to others now I'm not going to say it's the best I'm not going to say you know I would say South Paul I liked better uh, other boxing films I liked better but I thought for a movie that I didn't like the first two Creed 3 wasn't that bad I don't think it was that bad of a movie I easily thought it was the best of the the three as just a standalone movie Number six, I put Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Naz good as Into the Spider-Verse, but still an enjoyable time. I thought that Miles Morales and the other characters were still likable like they were in the first one. It's a beautiful looking movie like the first one. The assortment of visuals, the amount of creativity, whether it be as simple as him kind of sitting on a ledge drawing, but then we see this him his drawings over here while he's sitting over here, and we see the skylight and the city being drawn as he's doing it. All these little visual motifs are very eye catching. Uh, the story I could get into where I understand where Spider Man twenty ninety nine coming from where. He was part of a world, and he tried to do something, and it collapsed, and they were erased, and he doesn't want that to happen again, and that's why he's driven to stop Miles Morales, but on the flip side, Miles Morales is like, no, I'm going to save my dad, no matter what you say, so I understand both sides of the conflict. Uh, the chase with all the Spider-Men chasing Miles Morales was definitely a highlight. Gwen, I did not mind her. Um, I don't like that Peter Parker is just there to have his baby and be like, oh, look how cute my baby is. Once or twice it was tuned up, but it kept going, and that joke ran old, got old quick. Very quick, it got old. And the ending is not really that satisfying because it's got to be a cliffhanger because you got to wait for the next one. So then you, you don't really have a strong cap to it, to the finale. So it just, it doesn't really, 
it's like a lot of those movies where it's kind of hard for it to work as a standalone because you have a big old, there's no big action scene. I guess you say the spider chase, Spider-Man chasing scene, but still like one big battle. It's just there's so many things up in the air with the, the villain and all this other stuff that just leaves you a bit, okay, you gotta see what happens next. Not... entirely satisfied at least to me some people don't mind that to me I do because it's like you don't have you're watching the story you don't have the end of the story and you have to wait this amount of time for the end of the story so I don't know that brought it down a little bit but it's still I still liked the movie it's still pretty good and depending on how the third one is if this don't end on a satisfying note or not Maybe it goes higher. I don't know. But probably not. As a standalone, it's like... Uh, like I said, I th pretty good, but now it's just the first one. Number five, The Holdovers. Paul Giamatti... Comedic, but it's more drama. Paul Giamatti is a very good actor. This is in the vein of Dead Poet Society or Google Hunting, where he's a teacher, and he... He's hard on his students. There's a group of students that kind of have to stay at the school during the holiday break. Because they have nowhere else to go. And he's forced to take care of these kids. At one point, most of them go except this one kid. And it's about the bond he has with this kid. And what's going on with the kid's life. And it also opens up what's happened to Paul Giamatti's character in the past. And then bonding. And then kind of helping each other. I thought it was a pretty effective story with, again, a, Paul Giamatti did a wonderful job. I'm sure he'll get a nomination for it, and he'll deserve it. He won't win, because The Holdovers is not popular enough of a movie to get that, but I, I do think he'll get a nomination, and he deserves it. So, I'm not going too deep on it. I reviewed that not too long ago, but Holdovers is definitely a good one. Number four, I know people will laugh when I say this, The Pope's Exorcist. <laughs> That's a film where I've seen so many exorcism films, I'm not really a big fan of the genre. I think they all kind of run together, samey. I don't even like the original Exorcist. I like the third one. I think that's the best one. I would say that's my favorite exorcism movie is Exorcist 3, and that's primarily because of George C. Scott and Brad Dourif's acting and their back and forth rapport we're going head to head is fantastic I also like Deliver Us From Evil because I liked it as a cop movie as well as an exorcism film I like the blend of those two genres this one the exorcism stuff is nothing you haven't seen before it's what I liked about it was Russell Crowe was having a shitload of fun with this with the lies of dialogue he's saying and showcasing and he has this other priest and they have like a buddy cop rapport with each other and it didn't end on a stupid note you know it didn't as in a downbeat note there's a little bit of blood at the end uh, Russell Crowe has some good lines even at the end of the film like I said it Russell Crowe it's probably my favorite performance he's done in a while. Because I do think he's a good actor. And... He took a mediocre movie and helped elevate it to an entertaining time. So it's mainly his performance is why I put it up so high. It's kind of one of my favorite performances of the year. Because how much fun I had with him. And the story was kind of interesting with what the what the demon had done throughout history, and I actually didn't mind that idea. I, I won't spoil it for those who haven't seen it. But uh, the Pope's Exorcist, I, I did like. Number three, Extraction Two. 
I would say the first distraction is still a better one. Uh, the issue I have with distraction two is I think that there's some pacing problems and the girl that he's got to protect. I'm not really gun ho about her. But I thought Chris Hemsworth was still effective in the role. And you have some pretty good action sequences when they pop up. In particular, the prison sequence. The prison sequence, I would say, is the best action scene of 2023. Where it looks like it's all done in one take. Looks like it's done in one, all in one shot. Where they're doing this, and they're doing the prison yard, and he's kicking people's ass, and this and that. If it kept that going for the rest of the movie, because um, it's a pretty lengthy scene. Because then it also goes to a car chase, and that's a fantastic scene. How long it is, how much it looks like a one shot. To put it in a juvenile sense, it blew its load at that moment. And the other action was it's not as good as that. But it's still pretty damn stellar action sequence. And it also ended on a note where, you know, the, the problem I had with this stretch in one was, I don't want him to die and ambiguous. Is he dead? Is he not dead? They don't have that in this. So I appreciate the sequel said, you know what? No, he's alive. You like that character. He's alive. And things are fine by the end. And maybe he'll go on another mission. But he's fine. And Well, a sequel doesn't become a detriment to the original. But a benefit to the original. If these films were on Blu-ray, I would pick them up. Extraction 1 and 2. Sadly, they're not. But I would actually like to rewatch it again now that I'm talking about it. I would like to rewatch that film again. Back to back with the first one. Again, I wish there was a fucking uh, way to get them, but Netflix are assholes about that. Go figure. Uh, so, yeah, 10 Thanksgiving, 9 Guy Riches of Covenant, 8 Dungeons and Dragons Honor Monthies, 7 Creed 3, 6. Across the Spider-Verse, 5, The Holdovers, 4, Pope Exorcist, 3, Estraction 2, number 2, Silent Night. I know a lot of people don't like the film, they call it very generic, they call it very by the numbers, boring. It hit the right notes for me. I would have preferred about 10 minutes of editing in the middle. I would have preferred a bit more action. But it was kind of, this is the type of film I kind of grew up with back in the day in terms of going to the video store and I would see this kind of straightforward, simple plotted revenge movie with a lead character I really enjoyed, Joel Kinnaman. I thought he did a bang up job. He was the MVP of the movie. I liked the way it was directed. I thought it was a good looking movie with the scene transitions. When the action was there, I thought it was fairly effective. I knew it was not going to be hard-boiled or hard-target. It was never going to be that, because they don't make movies like that anymore. Just the, the reality of the situation. If films come close, it's very, very rare. And... I like the gimmick. I like the gimmick that it's a silent movie... So it made it feel a bit different compared to the other type of revenge stories. And I don't think it had a conflicting message like Death Sentence. Where we're really, really against revenge, but then look how cool the revenge is at the end. I don't mind Death Sentence, I don't hate Death Sentence, but I'm just saying it didn't really know what it wanted to be. Here it did. I do wish maybe if they had a bit more budget. And they could have gotten bigger with the action scenes. I don't know. But uh, I, I did like Silent Night. And number one, I'm going to put the Iron Claw. Now, again, I do have... Like, all these films... Like, none of these films are probably, like, 5 out of 5 or even 4 out of 5 stars. I think most of these 
maybe Iron Claw would be four. I don't know, but most of these be like maybe three, three and a half out of five. Like, there's not one movie this year that I thought, oh my god, like, this is going to be a um, bullet train day shift. Like, I got that much of pumped up. But, again, the Iron Claw is probably closest. Issues I have with the film, how it kind of plays around with the, the real life events where an entire brother is missing, which that's, I, I know they have their reasons, but I think that's shitty. There are certain gaps in the story that feels like it would have worked better if this was like a, I don't know, one of those five, six, seven episode miniseries, limited series. But it was wonderfully directed. I thought it really got into the, the tragedy of the story. The love these brothers have for each other. Of the Von Erichs. You really sense the tragedy. Zach Garfron got an amazing shape for the role. And he was really good. One of his final lines. Which I know the, the real Von Erich said. Not in that way. But he said in real life. In a different set of circumstances. Really got me. Made me misty a bit. And I wonder if a film is able to do that, then it, for the most part, accomplished his its job fairly well. So, I do wish. I had to, I'm usually the opposite. I kind of wish it was a bit longer. Just to, for me, the some of those gaps be filled. I know it's from one guy's perspective, but like more conversations between Kevin and Terry Von Erich's things. But I thought. You know, this was a story that was told rather effectively, but at the same time didn't feel exploitive. And I think of the films this year, that one should definitely be nominated for Best Picture. And in my mind, when. Because I can't think of another that would be close to, to it, but that's just me. But with that said, that's my list. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.